Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Retro Select, a series of quick looks at retro games I feel like playing. Today I feel like playing Tomb Raider. This was a 1996 release from Core Design, published by Eidos Interactive. The initial concept is credited to one Toby Gard, who created Lara and worked as the lead artist on the project. Lara's original influences include Tank Girl, Indiana Jones, and the John Woo movie Hard Boiled. Now, Tomb Raider has become one of the most famous video game series in the world, though in more recent years the rebooted version is probably better known than the originals at this point. The original game was developed as an attempt to combine the exploration and adventuring style of Ultima Underworld with the 3D characters of Virtua Fighter. It also took heavy inspiration from Prince of Persia with its precise tile-based movement and jumping, and there's even an enemy that pays direct homage to the Shadow Prince from Prince of Persia later in Tomb Raider. Lara herself was hand animated rather than motion captured because motion capture at the time wasn't really precise enough for the uniformity of movement that the team wanted to go along with the movement system in the game. And the third person perspective was chosen as a deliberate contrast to the large number of first person shooters, or Doom clones as they were known at the time, uh, that were around at this point in the 90s. And the game first released on Sega Saturn in Europe due to a timed exclusivity deal, but I grew up with the MS-DOS PC version running in software mode, so that's the version we're playing today, like it or not. Alright, let's go play Tomb Raider. Okay, here we are with the original Tomb Raider for PC, running in software with lovely interlaced video. Uh, it's been a very long time since I played this. Escape video compression systems. Look at that intro. This is what full motion video used to be like on PC for a while. I never quite understood the interlacing thing. I assume it was to save space. But I thought it looked shit then and it still looks shit now. <laughs> What's a man got to do to get that kind of attention from you? It's hard to say exactly, but you seem to be doing fine. Well, great. Though truth is, it ain't me that wants you. Oh? No, Miss Jacqueline Natla does, from Natla Technologies. You know, creator of all things bright and beautiful. <laughs> Seal it, Larson. Ma'am. Feast your eyes on this, Lara. How does that make your wallet rumble? I'm sorry. I only play for sport. Then you'll like a big park. Peru. Vast mountain ranges to cover. Sheer walls of ice. Rocky crags. Savage winds. And there's this little trinket. An age-old artifact of mystical powers buried in the unfound tomb of Qualapec. That's my interest. You could leave tomorrow. Are you busy tomorrow? Oh dear, what's going on? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry about that. I think the problem we had there is I, I had a controller plugged in and I guess its analog stick was uh, pointing somewhere it shouldn't do. Anyway, I like I said in the intro, I'm playing this the way I grew up with, which is in software mode with the keyboard. So, let's do it. Um... So, let's have a quick look at Lara's home first. This is the, the tutorial segment. It gives you a chance to practice all our moves. Welcome to my home. I'll take you on a guided tour. Use the direction keys to go into the music room. So we got arrow keys to move forward and turn. Okay, let's do some tumbling. Press the jump button. Now press it again and quickly press one of the directions and I'll jump that way. Whee. So if you never played the old Tomb Raiders, the way the jumping works is crucial to understand. If you look at the floor textures, you can see that they're split into tiles. And so if we stand at the edge of one of these tiles, and in fact if we stand at the edge of the 
at the edge of the oops edge of the mat like this when you jump forward you'll see that Lara goes a certain distance forward and understanding how far she is able to leap under various circumstances is absolutely crucial to understanding this game ah the main hall sorry about the crate I'm having some things put into storage and the delivery people haven't been yet So when this came out, this was still pretty early days for the 3D platformer. And so there's obvious comparisons to be made with stuff like Super Mario 64, which handles 3D platforming. And while still pressing forward, press action and I'll vault up onto it. Very differently to this. So this is a, it's actually a similar style of contrast between old 2D Mario games and 2D games like Prince of Persia and so on. So this is more about understanding your exact capabilities and making good use of them. Whereas things like the Mario games in both 2D and 3D have always felt a bit more free. Almost like you can sort of be more creative with the moves. Whereas in this, there's this, there's this very strict sort of grid-based arrangement that you have to learn how to deal with. But you can also do this. Wee. And everyone was very excited when they learned how to do that for the first time, which is you clamber up onto something and as you're clambering up, you hold down the walk button because normally she just clambers up like this, which is fine. But if you do it while holding the walk button, She does her handstand. I don't remember if there's any point where you actually have to do that. I think it's I think it's just just something cool that you can do. Um, but anyway, I think that's probably everything. Oh no, there's some stuff back here. Let's have a look through here. This used to be the ballroom. I don't actually run everywhere. With the walk button down, if you want to look around, press and hold the look button. Then press in the direction you want to look. Oh, what is the look button? Um, oh my god, I actually, actually remembered that after a good 20 years or so. It's the zero key on the numeric keypad. And then you can just look around at your leisure. So this section here is designed to sort of show you how if a jump is too far for me i can grab the ledge and save myself from a nasty fall Walk so this shows you how the right various jumps work go any further then press jump immediately followed by forward and while i'm in the air press and hold the action button so we can go leap and grab press forward and i'll climb up there we go very important to learn that if i do a running jump i can walk to the edge with the white line until i stop then let go of walk and tap backwards to give me a run up press forward and almost immediately press and hold the jump button so you notice that she jumps back jump until the last minute pretty much exactly to the edge of a tile there and then you jump and up and there you go so there's, there's stuff like she doesn't jump immediately if you're doing a run-up like that. She'll jump when she reaches the edge of the tile. So that means when you're doing sort of precise jumps off the edge of cliffs and so on, um, the controls actually work in such a way that it's a lot easier to do that than if, if you'd have to oh, manually time it. One. To do a running jump exactly as before, except while I'm in the air, press and hold the action button to make me grab the ledge. So this is running, jump, and grab. So running, jump, and grab. Nice. There we go. This is quite a complex control scheme. In fact, it still is quite a complex control scheme, especially if you're playing a your controller. I've actually always preferred this on keyboard, which is why I'm playing it with keyboard now. Press forward and hold action. I can't climb up because the gap is too small. But press right, and I'll shimmy sideways until there is room. Then press forward. 
See, this is where that mechanic you see in every AAA game ever has come from. Tap backwards, and I'll jump off backwards. Immediately press and hold the action button, and I'll grab the ledge on the way down. Could have told me that before I jumped off. You can sidestep somehow as well. How do you do that? Maybe she'll tell us. Look at those bendy textures. This is why I like the software version. It has all sorts of those old sort of... The whole thing looks like it's it's made of cardboard. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, how do we sidestep? Because you definitely can. So it's not walking sideways. It's not... Oh, I don't know. Let's go for a swim. Sure. The Let's do that. And the directions move me around underwater. Sploosh. Ah, <sighs> oh, air. Just use forward and left and right to maneuver around on the surface. Press jump to dive down for another swim about, or go to the edge and press action to climb out. Right. Now I'd better take off these wet clothes. <laughs> yes, she better take off her wet clothes and then fade out. Right, let's just check. Detail level is on high. Controls. Delete and page down to step left and step right. No wonder I couldn't remember. Okay. Let's play. Interlacing Y. My God, it's a tomb. She must raid it immediately. Oh no, wild dogs! Animal cruelty right from the start. That's the Lara we know and love. Box art shot. Right, let's do this. Now, one thing you might find interesting about the PC version of this in particular, especially if you're more experienced with the PlayStation version, um, is that for some reason the PC version for some reason the PC version didn't really have any music except in cutscenes whereas the PlayStation version actually had music um, what the PC version in had instead is red book audio on the CD so actual CD audio that you could play in a CD player um, of just weird noises and it was really atmospheric. Apart from the one that sounded like uh, a toilet. That uh, just to ruin the atmosphere even further, the level was even called the cistern, if I remember correctly. <laughs> but yeah, for the, for the most part, for the most part, the, the PC version here had the ambient sound that you're hearing now. But it wasn't just this one track, it was like a different track for every level. It was very effective. Now, there's a few things you'll notice about Tomb Raider. 
as we play. Um, especially things that we sort of take for granted in modern games. So there's no objective marker, no indication of what we're supposed to be doing, no indication of where we're supposed to be going, no map, no mini-map, no interface even, aside from the health bar that pops up when you're under attack or when you've got your guns out. You've got unlimited ammo with your standard guns, uh, but they're not very powerful guns. So th there are additional weapons to find as you explore. But this, this first game in the series in particular isn't really about combat. Team Raider 2 kind of upped the, the amount of combat that there was in it and was sort of a controversial choice for some people as a result. But the first Tomb Raider very much primarily about exploration and solving puzzles you also see there's a distinct lack of Duke Hickey's to acquire as you wander around as well there's no like collectibles there's no ammo pickups there's no health pickup but there probably are health pickups actually thinking about it right so we can't get through there right now is there anything in this room that might help us? There is a hole in that corner that we should be able to jump up. So, hop! There we go. It takes a while to get accustomed to how you play this but this this is very much a game about being observant and looking carefully at your surroundings because it, except in very specific circumstances like that opening sequence where the camera deliberately panned down to where the camera panned around to show us that platform we could leap up to it's not going to show you where to go see where this takes us oh dear I didn't mean to do that now I've got a wolf to deal with animal cruelty animal cruelty it's what Lara Croft's known for the bloody plane going over I've been flying over all day today and I've got the window open because it's warm what is this It's a sprite! What is this sprite doing in my world of polygons? Just hanging out. It's just hanging out. Right, how do we get back up? Just here. Alright, then over the bridge. And round here. This game has such a distinctive feel to it. Like I said, it's been a very long time since I've played it, but just the the way this feels to play is distinct and actually quite nice. It's obviously very different to your typical analog controlled platformer that you have these days but there's there's just something about the the precision and the very methodical nature of movement in this game that makes it quite appealing that and the uh and the graphical glitches which are not a dos box thing that's that's how it's always been <laughs> it's part of the charm part of the reason i wanted to play the software version because this is how I grew up playing Tomb Raider. Now, is that death? Well, there's a bear down there, so that's probably death. So, I guess we want to do a big jump here. So we remember how to do a big jump, don't we? We hop back, then we run, and then we jump, and then we grab. 
that we didn't need to grab. That's fine. What about this? Is this death? No, this is stairs. Is there something over there in that corner? There are secrets in this game. Because this was the 90s and you had to hide secrets in your games. Oh, there's something over there. <laughs> that looks like a first aid kit. It is a first aid kit. Who could have left this here? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Alright, so now if I need to heal myself, I can do. I've taken a bit of damage, but probably not enough to warrant using a first aid kit right now. And let's continue on our way. Anything going to kill us in here? Oh, yep. Leave me alone. <coughs> hmm, a closed door and a switch. What could the solution to this fiendish puzzle be? Let's just have a peek in here first, because there's another first aid kit. See? I can find stuff. Right, and... Huh. And pull the lever. And open the door. We go through there? No. Looked like that might have been a secret, but I can't remember how secrets are sort of implemented in this. If, if they're actual sort of secret doors you have to open, or if they're just parts of the level that are a bit off the beaten track. Oh no! It's timed! What a disaster! Right then. Looks like time for some speed platforming. Pull the thing. Turn that. Hop back. Running jump. Jump! Grab! Oh no! I've messed it up. Come on, quick, hurry up, hurry up. Oh, damn it. I could have made that. I could have clearly made that. Anyway, let's do it right this time. Pull the thing. Step up to the edge. Hop back. Running jump. Oh, tits. Oh, no. You can make it. Up. Grab. Up. Run. Run. Oh. Ball sacks. All right, forget the forget the jump across the top platform now. Let's just let's just go about this sensibly. All right, to the edge and jump and land there. Good jump and grab. Beautiful through the door. This is still level one, by the way. 
Oh no! Traps! Time for doggy death! Maybe it's also time to use one of these. <sighs> Those are rickety platforms. That will sometimes lead you to, a, to your death, but also sometimes lead you to where you need to go. So let's just hang there. That looks like somewhere we need to go. So down we go. See how it's possible to make a 3D game without a mini-map which has intuitive level design? At no point in this process have I felt lost. Right, what have we got here? Not much, but I assume we don't want to end up down there. So let's hop back and run and jump and grab. No need to grab. Okay. Ooh, big first aid kit. And a wolf! Get away from me, wolfie. It's a mysterious switch. It's done a thing somewhere else. It's done a thing down in the hole, is what it's done. There we go. All right. 13 minutes, 40 seconds for the first level. 10 kills, three pickups, zero of three secrets. Onward. You gotta be a bit careful with the shooting because although she auto locks on to enemies, she doesn't auto switch targets when she kills something. So you have to stop firing for a moment um, to switch to a new target. Otherwise, you'll just keep filling the dead thing with bullets, which is not useful. This looks like it might be something. Is it something? No. No, it is not. Can we shoot it? Nope. Fair enough. It's just a creepy carving. Actually having a good time in this. I was I was curious as to how well it had aged. But while there's while there's definitely um a bit of an adjustment period to the controls, especially if you're used to analog controls. Then um is that it? No. There we go. That's what I was waiting for. We don't have the key, so... No. Yeah, there's definitely an adjustment period for the controls, make no mistake there, but... Once you get accustomed to that... It's actually... Not at all bad. Not at all difficult to... Uh, to figure out. Right, let's see what's up here. A room full of skulls. That looks nice and cheery. 
Jump! Grab. No need to grab. What is in here? Looks kind of like death to me, but I guess I guess we'll see. Let's 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 do this the careful way. Oh, crumbly platforms. Uh Ouch. Okay, well. I didn't need to be up there anyway, surely. Or do I? I think I probably do. <laughs> Slidey block puzzles, not just for Zelda anymore. Is that as far as that goes? I assume this wants to go in the specially marked area on the floor. Yep. Can I reach that from here? Let's find out together. Yep. Grab. Nice. Oh, health for me. Nice work, Lara. More bats. Bats, 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 bats? Where are the bats? I hear bats. Where are the bats? I shoot them. I shoot them. Ooh, a thing. What is the thing? It doesn't say. It's a gold idol. So as you can see, you've got two inventories there. One is for consumables and weapons, and the other is for sort of key items. That's a key, that is! That's what we wanted all along. Get out of here. Hmm. Is this going to be troublesome? I feel like this might be troublesome. We can do this. It's fine. Right, up to the edge and hop back and jump. Uh, no. Okay, I guess. I guess we're going another way. Because I don't think. Oh, it might. It might. But I don't think it does. I don't think she can get quite high enough. But we'll find out. That's a grunt. <laughs> That's a grunt that a tennis player would be proud of. Go on, jump! And not quite high enough. Okay, so we've got to go another way then. Excuse me, adjusting my ass. That's a dead bat, we can't pick that up. So where else can we go? I don't think this is a game where you can get yourself into unwinnable situations. Oh, I see what we have to do. Yeah. 
I'm gonna say I don't think this is a game where you can get yourself into unwinnable situations. Aside from dying, obviously. But I feel like there may be sequences designed to make you feel like you may have got yourself into an unwinnable situation. Such as this one. I wish she'd just keep pulling. Rather than just stopping after every tile. And then you have to tell her to grab it again. Pull it again. You know where we're going with this, Lara. Why don't you just, just, just keep it going? You're clearly strong enough. I don't know if it was intentional or if it's just a side effect of the um, the fact that this is running in 256 color VGA. Um, but I always rather liked the the shading on Lara. I don't think it was deliberately intended to look cell shaded, but it, just the way the lighting works in this game. There's just times when she looks very cartoony. Uh, it's quite an appealing look. Alright, up we go. More bats. More bats. No more bats. Where are you? I'm gonna get you. Wherever you are. we got here we've got a little passageway in this direction oh we're back at the start because that was creepy carving that isn't a secret that I just saw alright we do have the key for that door now though and there's a watery bit Choices. Um, should we have a look in the water? Let's have a look in the water. Got to keep an eye on that air meter up in the top right. My Lara can survive for quite a long time underwater. Not, not going on here. lovely lighting effects underwater here, especially when you consider how early these were in the grand scheme of sort of 3D graphics. Just the way that's uh, the lighting sort of rippling underwater. It's really impressive for the time. Right, what is in here, if anything? There's a bunch of things. Uh, doesn't appear to be anything in here. Oops. No, there appears to be absolutely nothing in here. This looks like it might be a door, though. Is it a door? I think it might be, but how do we open it? Can we shoot things? No, we cannot. Hmm. Very intriguing. Nope, 
Okay. So not that. Shoot the door. No. Evidently we're not supposed to do anything here just yet then. Unless we will move on in a minute, I promise. I I'm just curious. This room is intriguing me, because it looks like it should be important. We don't seem to be do able to do anything with these statues. Which is a shame. Oh well. Time to head back then, I guess. Go open up that door with the keyhole. Yeah, wolf, 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 wolf. And slain wolves, unacceptable. Unless you care about the well-being of wolves that have been trapped in tombs for thousands of years. No! No! No, no, no. None of that shit. Where... is the door? No. It's somewhere in this area because I remember I remember going past it and making a go no at it, but excuse the noise once again. Inconsiderate people with fat exhaust pipes. Oh there it is. Key. Get out of here with your dart traps and your wolves. See you, Wolfie, you're not getting the better of me. Not today. Not today, sunshine. I've lost half my health. Let's, let's maybe use one of these. <sighs> right. Three doors, only one of which is open. So I guess we'll go through this one. I'm having a really good time with this game, actually. Like I say, I was I was curious to, to check it out and just sort of revisit it after so long, but I I was skeptical as to how much I might actually enjoy it. But it turns out I'm having a very enjoyable time with it. All right, this is a tricky one. There's going to be a jump and grab sort of situation, I think. I don't think we need to do a running jump. But we do need to grab. There we go. And then a sort of diagonal jump here. There we go. Yeah, the, the, the controls of Lara are really pleasingly precise. 
on the keyboard. I remember really struggling with this on PlayStation for some reason. So it just didn't feel quite right on a controller for me. Perhaps because by that point, controllers were already being associated with th sort of 3D movement and the analog stick approach to 3D platformers. And this still, this still felt very much like a PC game, as it were. Because this was back in an era where PC games still felt very distinct from console games. I mean, yes, there were a lot of ports between PC and PlayStation in particular. Ooh, shotgun shells. But I don't have a shotgun, I hear you say. Well, that's okay, because we will probably find one at some point. Um... I guess we go down here. Yeah, PC, PC games had a very distinct feel from console games at this point. Even though there were a lot of ports between PC and PlayStation. Um, they were still obviously distinct markets. With their own distinct ways of doing things. Oops. And for me, although Tomb Raider is quite well known for coming out on the Saturn first, this will always be a PC game to me. The whole Saturn being first thing is is not because it was developed for the Saturn first. It was it was an exclusivity deal. So I I don't know offhand which version was actually developed first, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if it was the PC version first, and that might explain things like the lack of music. Just a simple hop there should do the trick. There we go. And carefully, no, too far. Alright, and then run and jump and grab and shoot the bat. There's the bat. Go away, bat. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get off my head. Not a switch. I guess this opens the middle door. There it is. Anything worth grabbing up here? Doesn't look like it. And drop down safely. Any goodies up here? No. Carefully down here. Carefully down here. And into the middle door, and I think... Whoa! Oh no! I didn't save. I didn't save, did I? No! No, I did not. 
And I don't think you can just continue. No, you can't. So remember to save in Tomb Raider, boys and girls. Otherwise, you'll have to start all over again and do it all again. But anyway, <laughs> lesson learned. Lesson learned. I'm sure you'll agree. Anyway, that was Tomb Raider from 1996. Um, still quite enjoyable. Just remember to save your game frequently. <laughs> Can't believe it. Unbelievable. Anyway, we'll leave that there for now. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.